Hey there, everyone. Welcome back. So most of my guitar pedals are actually pretty straightforward and basic as far as the controls go, right? Like my favorite overdrive pedal, the King of Tone, it doesn't have a lot of controls. Like it's basically volume, tone, and drive. It's pretty easy for me to figure out what that means. And even my more complex pedals, like I have a Chase Bliss Condor, and that's got, you know, a bunch of knobs and all these dip switches on the back. But after, you know, reading the manual once or twice and playing around with it, I feel like I have a pretty solid grasp on what it does. However, there is this one pedal that I've had for a couple years now, and I still find I struggle with it. I forget certain functions and I have to look them up. And for some reason, I can't get every function of this pedal embedded in my brain. And that's the pedal I wanted to talk about this week. It's by Montreal Assembly, and it's called the Count to Five. So this pedal isn't a new pedal. It's been out about five years. And in fact, uh, Montreal Assembly just released a fifth year anniversary version of it with this cool new paint job. You should check it out. So what exactly is the Count to Five pedal? Well, it's basically a delay slash sampler pedal. Okay, so it has three modes. So it can do these weird pitch shifted and reverse delay sounds. It can sample your plane and chop it up and randomize it. And it can also, it does this kind of crazy layered looping. It just, it does a lot of things. So because this pedal has been out for a while, it's gone through several revisions. And you can actually look up what version of the pedal you own. So my particular pedal that I have is the latest version. It's the L. Also, the Montreal Assembly has updated the firmware several times. And the latest firmware is version 0 0.963. However, there are also these nightly firmware updates that add, from what I can tell, updated modes to the pedal. And I believe this nightly firmware is shipping pre-installed on the fifth anniversary versions of the Count of Five. However, you can roll back to 0 0.963. But you can see this, or this pedal is already getting very complex and I haven't even turned the bloody thing on yet. Now I mentioned this pedal has three modes. I'm only covering mode one because if I cover all three in one video, your eyes are gonna glaze over. So quickly, let's look at the controls. As you can see, the markings don't make a ton of sense if you haven't seen the pedal before. So we're gonna go through the switches first. Now, no matter what mode you are in, these switches do the same thing. So we have the M switch. It's a three position toggle. It controls what mode you are in. Up is mode one, middle is mode two, and down is mode three. The next is the Q switch, which stands for quantize. This one's trickier. It's it bounces back to the middle position. So it lets you, you know, kind of zoom through. I'll explain that. So the pedal has six quantize modes and I'm gonna list them over on the right. To move through these quantize modes, you have to hit the Q switch up or down and you're like moving it like a menu, okay? When you see the longer white flash, you know you're back at the none position. So each time you move it, it'll flash. And the minute you see one like that, that's longer, that means you're back at that sixth one. So, you know, chromatic, whole tone, diminished, augmented, fifths, none, longer. Okay, does that make sense? Now, normally when I turn on this pedal, the first thing I do is get the Q switch up so it's in the fifths and octaves mode because I find it most usable. And finally, the last switch is the expression pedal switch. Okay, so you can plug in an expression pedal here. And it this, much like the first switch, has three positions. So at the top position, it says the expression pedal is gonna control this knob, knob number two. In the middle position, it says the expression pedal is gonna control knob three. And in the bottom position, it says the expression pedal is gonna control knob number four. Okay, so it's pretty straightforward. And then finally, we have these bottom foot switches. This one bypasses the unit. And this one is a soft switch that does different things depending on the mode you are in. Okay, so those are the main controls. Let's look at the knobs in mode one. So we have a mix knob, that's very, very easy. It goes dry and wet, uh, full dry, full wet. And actually full wet can be very helpful and because um, you can blend it in on the modes and play around with it dynamically, so it's kind of fun. The DIR1 knob, so that controls the direction and speed of the reed head, okay? So let's play a basic loop and you'll hear what this means. This is the loop. Okay, so here's where the DIR1 knob is, okay? So basically, 
past noon, it's forward. As you higher, go higher, the higher the pitch, right? Now, before noon, it actually reverses. So you hear that? It's reverse. So it sounds really chaotic and crazy. Now when I go to the cue and start messing around with that, that'll start changing how this sounds dramatically, right? Okay, so that's what the Q1, well, that's what the Q switch does. Now you will notice that the DIR1 knob is turned up or down past a point. You start hearing it make new pitches, right? So listen to this. Okay, you hear those? So I think that's what the feedback to the right head is. And if we turn it backwards, same deal, only reversed. Okay, so the Len B knob. Now that selects the length of the buffer, right? So length of buffer. Now I think of that as delay time. However, this isn't like a normal delay pedal. The Len B knob gives you discrete settings, meaning they're set in intervals and can't be set to a tap tempo, right? So we're gonna start playing our loop again. Okay, so you hear that? As you turn the Len B knob, you're gonna see the LED change colors, indicating you move to a new discrete settings. Now the reason it didn't sound like anything was going on when I cranked it is because this last setting, the delay time's insanely long. Now, every time you turn this knob, the buffer is cleared. So whatever was, you know, in the delay being repeated is dumped out. Okay, so you hear how when you turn it, it just cleans everything before it starts delaying itself. Now, this is only if you are in standard mode. If you have transcendence mode enabled, then it keeps that stuff in the buffer even when you turn lens B, okay? That's how fast this goes. So it almost sounds like a flanger at the you know very highest settings, right? Okay, the last knob. Let's get this somewhere nice. So the last knob is feedback, and that basically is like the feedback pedal on a delay, like it dials in the number of the repeats, okay? Finally, holding down the soft foot switch mutes the right head, so it's kind of like a freeze function. Okay, so check this out. Let's listen to the loop. And turn on the pedal. Now go full mix, you can really hear what it does. So it freezes the length of the sample. That's determined by Len B. So you hear that? Obviously you get this extreme sound when you have the mix cranked, right? So those are the basic functions, but we're not done yet. Oh, hell no, because in mode one, the Q switch gives us some additional functions, okay? So holding Q down allows you to add a low pass filter by turning DIR1.
So there's that thing fully in. And there it is fully gone. So also, holding down Q gives you access to a modulation setting, okay? So you turn Len B for frequency and turn feedback for depth. And to turn it off, you're going to go full counterclockwise with feedback. Okay, so let's hear the uh, modulation. That's pretty crazy right there. Obviously, you might be, you know, if you're not going for super weird, you might want to keep the settings more modest. Okay, so now holding Q up lets you adjust a trigger, which causes the read head to move away from the right head when the amplitude of the input signal breaks a certain threshold. A little confusing. So. The DIR1, while holding Q up, adjusts the sensitivity of the trigger, okay? So uh, counterclockwise is very sensitive, clockwise turns it off. And then Len B adjusts relative distance the read head is placed after a trigger event. Okay, so let's hear what this does. I'm gonna crank the mix so you can really hear it. sensitivity where it's okay you see the white flashing that's when it's um, that's when it's triggering okay so now we're gonna move the distance of the head after it triggers So it's confusing, but it's pretty cool. I mean, if you're kind of in a random chaos mode, you know, way of thinking, this is a great, great thing to play around with. So finally, a word on transcendence. So normally the buffer is cleared when you change Len B in mode one. You can kind of hear it like, you know, the repeat stop when you change it. Also, the buffer is cleared when you go to mode two or mode three, okay? So transcendence is a feature that keeps the audio in the buffer instead of clearing it in those moments, okay? And I'll, let's look at this together. So here's how you turn on transcendence. You're gonna bypass the pedal. You're gonna hold down the soft switch until the light turns green. There you go. It's now in transcendence mode. You know that because when you turn the pedal back on, the light is green. If you wanna go back, Bypass the pedal, hold this down till it turns blue, quickly release, boom, blue, we're in normal mode, okay? So why is transcendence anything you care about? Well, let's play around with it. I'm gonna let you just kind of hear what it does here, okay? So to do this, I'm gonna obviously crank our mix. I'm also gonna crank the feedback. Now normally, when I would change this, clear it but it's not clearing the buffer here's where you can get into some very cool sound design chaos stuff I mean some of it like total noise you know craziness it's just it does so much once you kind of turn on transcendence mode in, in mode one. You can just do a lot of crazy sounds. So that's it, that's transcendence mode. Obviously with this pedal, what you kind of need to do is you kind of need to play with it and experiment with it and just kind of see what different things do. 
As you can probably tell, no manual is going to really be able to cover all of this. It's just one of the, it's it's like a sandbox, right? You're just kind of screwing around with it. And as long as you know that certain knobs and things actually do something, sometimes it helps me to just go into it and not even have a plan of what I want and just turn knobs until I find something weird and it sparks an idea. All right, guys, that's it. Thanks so much for watching. I hope this video helped untangle the knot that is the mode one in count to five. Um, I do find that I spend a little more time actually in modes two and three. So if you want to check those out in a couple weeks, you're going to see both of those videos show up. So please stay tuned for those. Um, thanks so much again. And please like, share and subscribe if you enjoyed the video um, and be safe out there and have a great day. Thanks again. Okay. Peace.